Before this video begins, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliates down below so you can get discounts on different car mods and products. Alrighty, let's get into the drive. Hello and welcome. Today we are driving a 2019 Kia Stinger GT. This is an all-wheel drive version. I would like to thank Flood Ford Lincoln in Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to both review and test drive this vehicle. I just filmed a full in-depth review with this car, so make sure to check that out, currently out on the channel. And we'll go through a quick spec run through here, and then we'll get it out on the road. All right, so this Kia Stinger is a GT model again, all-wheel drive, has about 75,000 miles, and sticker is around $26,000. This is a four-door hatchback sedan with seating for five, and can be had in either all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive variations. This Kia has a curb weight of about 4,023 pounds. It is powered by a 3.3-liter twin-turbo V6, making 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. This is mated with an 8-speed automatic transmission and has a manufacturer reported time of 0 to 60 at 4.7 seconds. This all-wheel drive model gets 17, 25, and 20 mpg out of a 15.9 gallon fuel tank. It rides on 19-inch alloy wheels and has ventilated Brembo disc brakes in the front and the rear. Tire sizes are staggered with 225s up front and 255s in the rear. You get blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and auto high beams in this Kia Stinger. Kia released the Stinger back in 2017, and it's still in production at the time of filming. It competes with the Audi S4, BMW 3 and or 4 series, and the Mercedes AMG C43. This is 190.2 inches long, 73.6 inches wide without the mirrors, and is 55.1 inches tall. It rides on four-wheel independent suspension with a 3.54 axle ratio. You get a nice performance touch in here, which is a center LSD or limited slip differential. And you get a couple of functional uh, air vents up in the front of this car. In the rear, you get dual stainless steel exhaust with quad tips in the rear. And to make a couple quick Kia jokes, hopefully the car doesn't get stolen by the time I bring it back, and uh, hopefully it happens to not catch on a car fire, because yay, Kia jokes. But I'm independent, I say what I like, I think the car is cool. Alrighty. Alright, that'll do it for the specs. Make sure to go check out the full review if you want everything else, and an in-depth tour. But, we are going to get this out on the road. So, we will uh, start ourselves just in... Uh, comfort drive mode. This also has sport, eco, and smart, and a custom where you can change some things. All right, so I have not driven a Kia before, actually. I've reviewed a Kia Telluride, but I have not driven a Kia Stinger, that's for sure. So I'm excited to try this thing out. So uh, firstly, when you are in this Kia Stinger, you get a, um, you get a, whatever it's called, you get a flat bottom steering wheel. So that's really cool. That's a nice performance touch from Kia. Just gotta put my sunglasses on. And additionally, if you can see, uh, on my hands are some gloves. I would like to thank Abigail and Jared for providing me with these. These are gonna be cool to add to some videos here in the cold winter and maybe even the summer. So thank you guys for that gift and uh, love you both. You are awesome to call friends. All right, so uh, just starting out in this Kia Stinger. It has pretty manageable brakes so far. They're not too aggressive. Um, they are Brembo's, so they're, they're looking really cool in that front, but uh, they have the nice uh, red brake caliper right down there, as you can see on screen. But it's pretty easy to drive so far. It has very uh, very light, but very direct steering. It, it's, not, it's not numb, but it's, uh, it's moderately touchy. And we'll do a 0-60 to 60 run in just a moment. They uh, actually repaved my 0-60 uh, to 60 road that you have seen a million times here when I review vehicles over at this location. So it is brand new, brand new pavement, and uh, we will definitely get some good 0-60 to 60 runs coming up on that in the coming months and beyond. 
All right, so for road noise here, we're going about uh, 55 miles an hour. Uh, you do have an analog uh, gauge cluster mostly in here. You have a center multimedia screen. Uh, trying to see if I can find the, yeah, digital speedometer. Okay, so yeah, going about 55. It's pretty quiet in here. You have 19 inch wheels, but uh, so far noise is not too bad. It's not dead silent in here, but it's really not, not bad at all. Let's see, and of course there's going to be some traffic, so I will get back to you in just a second when I can actually make a left turn. Alright, that's only 2500 RPM, sounded good there. Goes uh, riding well through the bumps. Uh, it has a little bit of a stiffer ride, I'll admit, but it should, being a sports car. So, Alright, let's pop ourselves into sport mode here. Yeah, you can feel a little change in the steering. Nothing too impressive, but it does have a little change. So let's come to a stop on my beautiful new 0 to 60 road, and I will floor it. All wheel drive, remember. All right. This thing sounds good. I'm not sure how much, if any, audio is pumped in, but it sounds good for a V6. Uh, it doesn't sound anything like uh, a G37 motor or something, like a v uh, Nissan VQ motor, and I like that. I like more, uh, I'm not going to say I have a mature taste in cars, I'll, I'll admit I don't, but I, uh, I like a bit of a more mature sports car. So, huh. This car is very much interesting me. Alright, it's very responsive, feels good in corners. Uh, a little bit of body roll, nothing massive, but this is a long car, it's 190 inches long. So, it's getting up there in size. Um, but, you can pretty comfortably fit people in the rear, so. Let's just go back into comfort mode. Uh, the transmission definitely perks up in sport mode, which is of course a good thing. Um, yeah, riding through bumps, riding through smooth so far, it really doesn't have much of wind noise or tire noise. It is very quiet in here. Um, it has a bit of a smaller infotainment screen, but this is a 2019. We're about to head into 2024. I'm not gonna judge it harshly on that. And yeah, the brakes, uh, they, they have some bite. <laughs> If you stomp them like that, obviously, but uh, they're good Brembo brakes, so they function pretty well, but they're really easy and drivable. Like, these do not feel like, in any negative way, uh, sporty brakes. And I'm not going to be abusing this car, it's a dealership car, but, let's see. I like this steering, wow. The steering is nice. It's very light, very, almost, I don't know. I wouldn't say there's much road feel. Okay, so in comfort, it definitely shifts a lot slower, even when you do floor it, but it can get it can get up there. But then if you pop into sport, immediately everything does tighten up. Uh, steering tightens up quite a bit. See, that definitely <laughs> affects me. Um, but it's not it's not unforgiving. This car is big, but it, it drives about its size, is what I would say. It's not too small, it's not too big, but you, you know you're not driving something tiny. Let's try those paddles. Three, two, okay. A little hard from three to two. All right, pretty good uh, responses from that. Wow, actually really good responses on uh, on all fronts. Then you can also shift it uh, through the shifter this way. Also really quick. That's good. I love this steering wheel. This flat bottom steering wheel is really cool to have in a Kia. And stickering for about $42,000 when new. This is impressing me. It, it's not insane in, in its performance. Um, it's about 45 degrees right now. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> be driving it too hard into corners or anything like that. But all-wheel drive has worked well so far. No tire, uh, tire spin of any kind. Hmm. Visibility isn't too bad either. Being a hatchback um, that this is, there's an okay size window. Nothing crazy, but nothing nothing bad or unforgiving. That's like a, a term I've said multiple times already about this Kia Stinger. Unfor it's not unforgiving. This Kia is forgiving. This Kia is sporty. It's a sporty car. I'd consider it more of an entry-level sports car, but it is. Um, I could see this being a great daily. I would choose this as a daily driver easily, along with some other cars, but um, I haven't driven too many from this class yet. But, versus, say, a Mustang, this isn't quite rambunctious, understandably. But you can get this in rear-wheel drive, and you could drive it uh, in the dumb ways a lot of people drive Mustangs. Um, I would also, but... 
huh, this car is really impressing me just because it's a Kia. It's so random. That's enough get up and go for most people in a daily use situation, and that's comfort. So now if you go into sport, it kicks right up through the gears. Wow, this thing really does drive pretty well. Look at this. It's not doing a snaking effect um, like bigger cars do and SUVs would do if you drove them more like this, but It's pretty comfortable too. Uh, I like the side bolsters. Um, the thigh bolsters, although they're okay bolsters on paper, they're far too wide in my opinion. I'm a slimmer guy, so I don't have the most uh, most say in that, but these are wider than average. Uh, it doesn't really feel like there's any bolstering at all. It feels like I'm uh, sitting in an armchair on the bottom of this uh, driver's seat, so. But this is a four-door hatchback that's pretty big. This is around the size of a mid-size sedan. And really, it does not drive that size. It doesn't drive tiny, but it's just so manageable. The hood is very easy to see over. I don't feel like I have a giant engine, even though I do have a pretty big engine in front of me. Um, a 3.3 twin turbo. The 365 horsepower is good. There's a little turbo lag, but almost none. Even in comfort, it hits you in the back a little bit. So, huh. Didn't think I'd be saying this, but I love Kia's sports car so far. But to find some gripes with it, maybe maybe the steering's a little too too touchy. It's very forgiving, but it's if you do any input, really, you're feeling it pretty quickly in terms of driving the car. Um, it's not gonna be anything too insane. Well, that guy just uh, passed a bus, and that guy. Highway illegal. Well, PSA everyone, do not cross a bus on an undivided road when its lights are flashing. That is a massive crime and you could kill a child. Do not do that. Okay, back to the review. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this thing is really driving well in all aspects so far. It's pretty quiet. I'll have to drive some of the other ones at some point, though it's competitors like the Audi S4 if I can get my hands on it, or certain BMWs. I'm not quite sure how the steering lines up to them, because from the BMWs I have driven, they have a lot heavier steering. Um, this is very dailyable steering, but it's just, eh, it might be too touchy for some. I would like this being a car enthusiast as a daily, but I don't think everyone would. The steering, because, let me go into eco mode then. It's still a little too touchy, I think. There's not enough of a balance for for the broad array of drivers that um, I'm not I'm not quite sure if they'd like the steering on this. Because again, going against it in this case, it's a $42,000 car. I don't know if it should have steering like this. You should be able to drive it a lot easier and simpler. Let's, let's pop into sport. I like the transmission on this. Uh, it shifts very quickly up and down, which is nice. Um, it's a very responsive throttle. It's uh, the throttle is on the floor. Um, there's a lot of travel distance. Uh, you don't really use all that travel distance, so um, it responds pretty quickly into the press, which is not a bad thing. I think this car would be good for a lot of uh, a lot of older people who want definitely a striking looking car. In my opinion, I love the exterior of this, front and rear, um, but. It might be a little... I don't know. It's very forgiving. If you want a sporty car, it's good to have. But I could see it's a little too sports car focused for some at the price point. It's priced similar to uh, like a Toyota, really nice Toyota Avalon or something like that. It beats some um, the Audi and the BMW on pricing by a good bit. And it gets a lot of the sports car uh, necessities, which is good. But I, it's a little bit trying to find its identity. You can't quite name an exact owner of this car just because everyone's gonna want something a little bit different. Although this car can change throughout driving modes, um, I don't know if it changes quite enough. I feel like there should be a softer mode on this car, not in terms of uh, shifting so much. It, it shifts pretty softly in, um, in comfort and eco modes, but I feel like the steering needs to be adjusted a bit in that feeling. It's just a little too touchy. 
like going through traffic every day in this and I don't know swerving not trying to swerve but you would swerve really hard it, it's a little too touchy in the steering but that's for me. I would like this car. I'm a car enthusiast. I like driving, you know, at least harder than average uh, in the daily drive. So not fast necessarily, but I like this kind of handling. And I like the practicality of this car. It has 23.3 cubic feet of space, I'm pretty sure, in the trunk with uh, all the seats in place. That's a good number. And uh, the rear seat is usable in this. You could fit three adults. Not great. You could fit two adults better. But you can fit adults back here for a reasonable amount of time. And it sounds great. Uh, the quad exhaust inside sounds decent. I'm not quite sure how it sounds outside, but you can hear the turbos a little bit. You can hear some turbo whistles, so that's a good thing in my opinion. The brakes are really manageable though. The throttle is also very manageable. So those are two out of the three are very good. Um, so that's fine with me. And for the price, I think it's a home run from Kia. I, again, in terms of reliability, I'm not quite sure, but this is a great first attempt at a sports car from Kia. I would definitely consider buying this myself. Alrighty, thank you again to Flood Ford, Lincoln, and Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to both review and test drive this Kia Stinger GT back from 2019. As always, thank you very much for watching, drive with passion, and take care.